Chapter 11. Date, Plans and a Trap is Set. Tarumi Uzumaki Estate. Naruto opened his eyes, the window bringing the early morning sun rays right into his retina, forcing him to bury himself in his pillows. In this case, Naruto happened to snuggle further into Mei's large breasts, who was still asleep, she moaned in appreciation and quietly moaned his name. Smiling, Naruto kissed up her chest and landed on her lips too, which he kissed all around them until finally launching his tongue into her open mouth. I'm being especially daring this morning, I suppose I'm still excited about our date today. Mei opened her eyes and awoke to Naruto jamming his tongue down her throat, it surprised and enticed her. Sending her tongue after his, her arms wrapped around his neck and they shared a passionate morning kiss. Breaking it, the two looked into each other's eyes, both were practically sparkling. Good morning, Naruto Koi. She smiled at him to which he returned with one of his own. Morning Mei. Are you ready for our date today? She nodded, excited about the plan for today. I think I'll get him to discuss our wedding and other things today. She thought with a blush. We better get ready, we can't stay in bed all day can we? Naruto suggested to which Mei moaned, hugging her blonde pillow tightly around his waist. Aw. Oh. But can't we stay in bed a little longer Naruto? Naruto just smiled and shook his head, doing his best to ignore the fake tears and puppy dog eyes she was giving him. I'm afraid not Mei, there is a lot to do today. Mei sighed and slowly released him from her embrace, climbing out of bed completely naked. She smirked as Naruto ogled her, while she put on her underwear, purposely putting them on slowly for him. You are such a pervert Naruto. She told him with her hands on her hips, trying her best to look angry when she really wasn't. His perverted qualities served to excite Mei much more than they annoyed her. Hey, when you have a beautiful fiancé, these things tend to happen. Naruto said, shrugging his shoulders with an innocent look. Mei giggled. Well I have a handsome fiancé but I don't, ogle. Mei fully turned around from dressing herself to see Naruto was still naked, his piece was erect, after watching her put on her clothing. Naruto smirked. You don't what Mei? I didn't quite catch that, shaking her head to escape from fantasies, Mei just scoffed and turned to walk out of the room. Get dressed mister, we have a date and much to discuss. The way she emphasized much made him very interested in what she wanted to speak about, so he quickly pulled on his black undershirt and pants, before deciding to go with the simple Kiri Jonin vest. It was a dark gray vest that had two large breast pockets either side, small shoulder plates jutted out from where his shoulders were. The collar on the vest was also very high, and Naruto always complained that it made him uncomfortable, but the quartermaster would hear none of it. It'll protect you from decapitation kid. I probably saved your life by giving you this vest, blah blah. If a ninja is strong enough, he shouldn't get into the position where he could be decapitated. He adjusted his forehead protector, checking it in the mirror and making sure it fits snugly on his forehead. The final piece were two black, fingerless gloves with metal protectors on the back. Mei always told him for a guy he spent way too much time on appearance, but Naruto always enjoyed getting dressed into his ninja gear, it made him feel legit. Naruto. Do you need me to help me with your makeup, I think I would be better suited for it, Naruto groaned at Mei's mocking, he wouldn't hear the end of it, if the guards told anyone about this. It's called being mature Mei, maybe you should try it sometime. It got eerily quiet after that, and Naruto was a little afraid to leave the room. Moving over to the sliding door, he cautiously opened the door a bit to peek out and saw no one in front of the door. Sighing in relief, Naruto opened the door and turned left, only to be stopped by an irate Mei. She was tapping her foot on the floor angrily. Um Mei hi me? His answer was a fist to the face, and Yuzumaki was all for fun and pranks, but their stubbornness and anger were very infamous too. Mei towered his over his unconscious body with a big smirk. She began to drag him by his feet downstairs to the living room. The Yuzumaki may have been a patriarchal clan, but the Yuzumaki women were always known for keeping their men in check. Poor Narukoi, he's the head of the clan, and yet he gets dominated by his fiance, he he. Kirigakure. Naruto and Mei walked out of the estate with looped arms, their hands interlocked with one another. Naruto was sweating bullets after the tense morning encounter and Mei just had a big happy smile on her face, a little too happy. Walking through town to their chosen destination, Naruto and Mei made small talk about the nature and history of Kiri itself, Mei was always happy to give detail on its past with the blonde. Upon arriving at the village's park, the couple moved off to the grassy field and away from the more populated areas of the park. 
it was another sunny day in Kiri and they wanted to soak up the warm rays, they also didn't want anyone to disturb them while they were together. Naruto pulled out the clothes he had been carrying in his pocket and laid it out on the ground, they had decided to have a nice picnic today and just talk. Mei sat down on the clothes and took off the bag she was carrying on her shoulder, she had opted to attempt to fix their food today. Naruto had reluctantly agreed after she had set her mind to becoming the best housewife for him, he really didn't mind all the cooking he had to do, but she insisted. Taking out her own meal first, Mei observed the simple meal of fish and rice, the fish itself being another of the rare species found near Yuzu country. Naruto's mouth was watering now, he couldn't wait to see what Mei tried to make him. Um, here Naruto. She quickly thrust out his meal with her head bowed low, anxious and embarrassed at what his reaction to her cooking attempt would be. Naruto looked at the meal and smiled, it was ramen. No one, not even Mei could make bad ramen in Naruto's book, so he took the noodles with his favorite pork meat and had a cautious bite. Mei looked on with white eyes as he had moved the noodles and meat to his mouth, anxious for his reaction. So, how is it Naruto Koi? Naruto chomped on the noodles and savored the flavor before swallowing, putting down his dish and looking at Mei with a serious face, she seemed to shrink under his gaze. It was, good. You are definitely getting better Mei, I can't wait to have more of your home cooking. Mei just got teary-eyed and looked down at the ground, Naruto was afraid he had said something wrong. He reached out with his arm, but was literally blown back, when Mei suddenly shot back up and pumped her fist into the air in victory. Yes. I'm doing better. One day I'll get to cook for Naruto Koi and our children, woohoo. Naruto outright blushed at the sound of children, but Mei seemed totally oblivious. After she had calmed down and they resumed eating, Naruto decided to raise the discussion on the future of their relationship. Hey Mei, you mentioned kids a little while ago. Have you already decided that you want children with me? Mei looked at him incredulously, as if she couldn't believe he didn't think that already. Of course I'm going to end up having your children Naruto Koi. I know you want to bring back our clan, and both of us being pure bloods means that our children will be guaranteed to carry the Uzumaki Kekei Genkai. I am prepared and know my place as your wife and future matriarch of the clan. Naruto frowned, he didn't expect her to think of the pregnancy as all business, sure he wanted to bring the Uzumaki back, but only if Mei herself wanted to as well. He would never force her to have children with him, he just couldn't. He grabbed a hold of both of her hands and saw her look at him curiously. Mei, I don't want you to think that us having children is just to carry on the line or anything, I want to bring the clan back, but I also want to be able to love and care for my children along with my wife, you. You don't seriously think that's the only reason to have children, right? Mei looked surprised for a moment but then smiled, squeezing his hands with her own slender ones. Of course Naruto, I just wanted to let you know that I am prepared to have many children with you. I'm not even doing it for the clan really, I'm doing it because I love you and I, I want to have your children. I've wanted kids for quite some time now, I never thought for a second, though that I would meet you and we would bring the clan back together. I love you and I will love our children with equal passion, there is nothing more that I want than to be a mother married to you with our little Yuzumaki running through the house, it would be like a dream come true. Naruto had tears in his eyes after hearing that, he had no idea she wanted to have children so bad, she wanted his children. He brought her into a tight embrace she was quite happy to receive, returning it back to him. Mei, I'm so happy that I have found you. I love you so much. She gently stroked his hair as he cried into her shoulder, glad they were able to talk about their future together. I love you too, Naruto Koi. After calming down from their emotional embrace, the two decided to lie down on their backs and watch the clouds. So Naruto, where would you like to have our wedding? Mei turned to face him as he looked at her, their hands intertwined as they lay there. Naruto looked like he was thinking, but then he just started smiling. It doesn't matter where we get married Mei, just as long as you're happy. Mei smiled, it was the answer she had expected from Naruto. I was deciding that we could maybe go to Yuzugakura. Naruto's eyes widened, Yuzugakura? Why go there, Mayheim? She sighed. Why not, Narukoi? We are Yuzumaki and we should marry in Yuzugakura don't you think? We could follow all the old traditions and customs, we can wear our Yuzu uniforms, walk the whirlpool fields, or even take a dive to see the reefs off the coast. Yuzugakura is such a wonderful place Narukoi. The way you describe it, I just want to go and live there. Naruto joked while in reality he really did want to live there. I agree, maybe someday we can. They looked at each other, just smiling at their dreams of grandeur. 
May, can you tell me about the history of Yuzu? I know you've told me some already, but you really have left out most of the recent events, May looked a bit downtrodden, before perking up for Naruto's sake, he deserved know the history. All right Naruto, where would you like me to begin? Naruto thought about it for a second. How about the time, when my mother was born, around, 30, 35 years ago? May looked up at the sky, trying to bring up her limited knowledge on the Yuzumaki past. Well, 35 years ago, tensions between Kiri and Yuzu spilled over into a war between the two nations. The boundary disputes and the lack of cohesion between the bordering countries led them to have great anger towards one another. Really, the Yuzumaki were so different from the mainland that we really did need our own island country, we were our own culture, but Kiri would not listen to reason. Naruto frowned, wondering if Yuzu was really worth a war between the two countries. While Kiri had numbers on their side, no one in their right mind underestimated our clan with the Kekei Genkai. The Yuzumaki were a small clan of pure blood surrounded by dozens of branch families that filled our population and were the real working class. The relationship between the branches and the head family were strained at best. At times, all the branch could be considered were glorified slaves, used only to work and serve the head family and in desperation, reproduction. When the Yuzumaki went to war, so did the branch families. Naruto continued to listen enraptured by the history. Wait May, if the branch weren't true Yuzumaki, that meant they didn't have the bloodline, right? May nodded. But how were they able to help us win if they didn't have a bloodline to help them? Well Naruto, we both know that bloodlines only enhance ninja, they do not make the shinobi. While it is true the branches rarely had anyone with the bloodline, they were skilled shinobi and weapon users. Their primary weapons were a bit old-fashioned for the current times, often consisting of long spears and shields or even short swords. The Yuzumaki went to war with our usual pride and confidence, some even boasting that Kiri would fall within three days, just in time for hurricane season. Thinking back, they were fools. It was the one time that Yuzumaki pride got in the way of our better judgment, but that quality wasn't our downfall, stubbornness was. Stubbornness? Naruto questioned to which May just nodded. Yes Naruto, the war at first, went well for the Yuzumaki. Kiri was first met on our home turf, they had been preparing an invasion fleet with, not only shinobi, but the daimyo's soldiers as well. We met them on eastern coast of Yuzu country, the whirlpools were always harsh to sea vessels, even the Yuzumaki, but we always knew just the right way to ride the storm, Kiri, was not so lucky. Their ships appeared to sail through clear skies and safe seas the entire voyage, while in reality the entire fleet was under an illusion by some of our best Gen Jutsu masters. By the time they realized that they were in a trap, half their fleet had been sunk, and the rest was under attack by the Yuzumaki, they never stood a chance. For all intents and purposes, the war should have been over right there but then, he came. Naruto was on the edge of his seat now, who was he? Who who came May? She shook in silent anger for a few moments before whispering his name. Madara Ichiha. Naruto was shocked, Madara Ichiha was the one who stopped the Yuzumaki? What, but how? Why? May calmed herself and took a deep breath. Soon after the war started, Madara had apparently entered Kiri, after drifting throughout the world after being rejected from his clan during the time of the first Hokage. Upon arriving in water country, he took advantage of the fact that Kiri had prepared for war and left the capital defenseless, gathering a few loyal followers, he launched an attack and killed the second Mizukage. After the coup, he proclaimed himself the third Mizukage and immediately led what was left of the army and hit the Yuzumaki vanguard. She slammed her fist together to give off the effect of the two armies attacking one another, Naruto could only imagine the battle in his mind. Our clan leader dueled Madara in close combat, Kekei Genkai vs Kekei Genkai. In the end, our leader was struck down, but it was not enough to demoralize Yuzumaki, you can take down our commander, but all we'll do is get angry, and that makes us stubborn. The battle continued until that bastard tried his newest jutsu ability, the ability to transport people or objects to another time and space. Naruto saw where she was heading with this, the thought alone scared him. He teleported the entire army? Mei just nodded solemnly. Yes, I don't know how he did it, or if that really is how he did it, but what happened is in history. Madara Ichi had defeated the vanguard and laid siege to Yuzugakur for five years. Five years? Naruto was amazed by the amount. Yes, that is where our stubbornness led to our downfall. In reality, we really had no other choice. Madara did not offer an armistice or chance to surrender, we had to fight. 
the siege brought about the creation of what could very well be the most powerful jutsu ever created by the Uzumaki clan, the ability or knowledge of how to create it has been lost over the years since. The greatest jutsu, ever? What, what was it called? Mei smiled a bit, pride of their clan getting the better of her. Great Uzumaki Vortex, it is sometimes referred to as the Great Funnel Cloud or the Landlocked Whirlpool. It is described as a giant vortex or tornado that envelops an area of land. This technique was erected around the entire island of Yuzu and stretched high into the sky, higher than any ninja could ever hope to reach. We are unsure of the exact use of the jutsu other than the strong wind that it is presumed to be made of, it was surely a difficult obstacle to get around from the Kiri perspective. The jutsu was extremely tiring for those using it however, and I believe it was rumored that the entire Uzumaki clan save the branch families had to work together to maintain it. How they were able to do it is unknown, but the siege was a bloody affair for both sides. Eventually though, the Uzumaki could no longer hold off the innumerable Kiri forces, and they were defeated. They both frowned at that, even though it had already happened they were still sad to hear it. We were forced to make reparations that we could never truly pay or become part of Kiri. Our surviving clansmen were faced with the unthinkable, give up our independence officially, or become the economic slaves of the prosperous Kiri. Either way, we lose. Naruto finished for her, his fist shaking in anger. That we did, our elders eventually settled for becoming part of Kiri. That was the end of Yuzugakura as an independent country, and the end of the Yuzumaki clan. Enticed by both the weakness of the head clan and the past atrocities committed by the Yuzumaki, the branches left immediately for a better life that was being offered in Kiri. The Yuzumaki did their best to remain on their home soil, but eventually everyone realized it was a lost cause and our clan fragmented, drifting apart into what it is now. Your mother went to Kanoha as a bright young teenager I suppose, she must have been one of the last to leave the home country pending her age. I on the other hand was taken by my father, who was from the head family and we left with mother's branch who came to Kiri. Since that day, we rarely spoke of the past that I have little memory of and called ourselves to Rumi, my mother's branch name. I was blessed and cursed when I was given the gene for our bloodline, but now that I have met you, I know that it truly was the best blessing I could have received. Naruto smiled and leaned in to kiss Mei who happily met him halfway. The Uzumaki clan may no longer be, but these two were definitely prepared to bring it back. Kirigakura, Streets. The couple walked along with each other towards the estate, the day coming near to a close. The passers-by would look and clap for the two, the relationship was known everywhere because of either shinobi's status. The more daring girls would whistle for Naruto, and Mei looked about ready to launch a lava bullet in each of their faces. Now now, Mayheim. They don't mean Mei interrupted him, a twisted smile on her face. Naruto, shut up before I kill you. Naruto just ducked his head down. Yes Mayheim. Mei smirked. Good boy. She patted him on the head for good measure, before turning her attention back to where the girls were only to find a staggering outcome towards them on the street. He was mangled and bloodied, his uniform was torn to shreds and his face was mangled, but it was still Ao. Ao. Ao senpai. Both shinobi ran up to him, right before he collapsed onto the ground, deftly caught by Naruto who laid him gently onto the ground. The man attempted to salute the Mizukage, but ended up coughing more blood onto himself, almost choking him. What, what happened to you, ow? The man attempted to form words, but only gurgled up more fluids, Naruto, and Mei both knew he didn't have long. Mei, I'll take him to the hospital. You should head to the Mizukage suite and coordinate the ninja corps, we have to find his unit, and who did this to him? Mei nodded and watched as Naruto disappeared in a vortex of water, before she herself left the scene as well. Kirigakura, hospital, recovery room. At the moment, Naruto sat next to a bed, where the occupant was hooked up to wait too many machines for the young blonde to count. He was unsure whether the older man would make it or not, but he wasn't ready to give up on him yet. As soon as Mei called for him, Naruto would go find who did this and make them pay. Who, who would do this? Ao is one of the best ninja from Kiri, and he isn't even a swordsman. Whoever they were though, they seemed to really want to get his Byakugan away from him, perhaps it was. Naruto was awoken from his thoughts by a low gurgle and saw Ao trying to get up, he was quickly stopped by Naruto. Ao senpai, you can't move yet. You're hurt very badly, and you need rest, don't worry about those guys who did this to you. We'll get them. I promise. Ao didn't seem satisfied, 
he kept grasping for something and made motions in the air with his hands, confusing Naruto. What is it? Do you want to write something? Ao attempted to smile and nodded, Naruto got up and found a piece of paper and pencil nearby handing them to the man. While his ability to write with his wounds was subpar, he was able to scribble some writing onto the parchment and shakily gave it back to Naruto. The swordsman took it and read the two words scrawled onto the message, his hands began to shake from the myriad of emotions running through him. The paper fell to the ground and in a flash Naruto had left the hospital, heading straight for home to get his equipment ready. Al fell back into his pillow and felt a rush of sedatives push him into a deep slumber, the note lay untouched on the ground. The two words were an act of treason, they were an act of war, they had Naruto on a warpath. Kanoha, Root. Kirigakurit, Mizukage Sweet. The suite was in a flurry of activity, May summoned squad after squad of shinobi, all receiving their orders and disappearing right before the next group came in. The village was to be searched, and the surrounding islands scoured for traces of Ao's team and the possible perpetrators of the crime, Kiri was taking no chances. These people have killed some of my own, I will hunt them down like dogs. Naruto appeared in front of an angry and anxious Mei, she looked ready to lash out at anything that crossed paths with her the wrong way. He had on his armor and mask, the broadsword fitted tightly to his back, and his equipment all stow away in his pouches and scrolls. I know who did this, I'm going to go confront the source now Mizukage-sama. Mei gave her attention to Naruto, her eyes gleaming with anger and anticipation. Who, who did this Naruto? Naruto growled. Brute. He hissed out the name like it was poison, Mei also visibly recoiling at it. You mean Kanoha, Kanoha is involved? Naruto shook his head negatively. I highly doubt Bachan even knows about this, Danzo operates in the dark with his operations. If there is anyone to blame, it is him and him alone and I'm going to go bring him to justice. Mei stared into Naruto's veiled eyes, her leadership skills taking over. No, it's too risky. He is on his home turf in fire country, attack him and all of Kanoha will be breathing down your neck. We will eliminate his lackeys first then proceed with diplomatic Naruto, slammed his fist down onto the desk, cracking its wooden frame. Those monsters killed a whole squad and left Ao Senpai permanently crippled, I'm going to kill those bastards. Danzo won't stop, no matter what we do, and Kanoha and Sanada are powerless to stop him, even if they wanted to. Mei glared at her fiancé, he was not making this any easier on her. I understand that, but there is nothing we can do Naruto. Naruto scoffed and walked towards the door, fed up with the politics and niceties of being a cage. I'm going, you'll thank me soon enough. Before Mei could utter another word, Naruto disappeared in a yellow flash. Her arm was outstretched towards the door, desperately trying to pull him back to her. She lowered the arm after a few long moments, her face tilted towards the floor. Salty tears fell down her cheeks as she broke down, her fiancé truly had sent himself into the lion's den, and he may not be able to escape this time around. Naruto Kanoha Forest, five miles north from Kanoha. Naruto appeared at a marked tree, his Horatian seal on it flashed for a moment before disappearing again, leaving Naruto alone in a dark forest. All right, Fox, it's time we use your sensing abilities to help me find them. What makes you think they are anywhere near here? Shouldn't they be back around Kiri? No, once Root gets the job done they always return right back to their master, Danzo. They act like dogs trying to appease their owner by following orders, pitiful. It doesn't matter anymore though, as soon as I find them, there will be no more Root or Danzo. Whatever, just start heading to Kanoha, while I try and pinpoint their location. Naruto got his bearings and broke out into a run, heading straight for his old hometown. A few minutes later, Naruto heard a grunt in the back of his mind and heard Kaiubi point out the direction in which he had to go. Moving out at speeds most would have found impossible, Naruto caught sight of four robed figures moving quickly through the underbrush, they were fast approaching Kanoha. He spied them and saw the telltale Anbu masks and white robes of the black ops in Kanoha, they were covered in blood head to toe. Sir, the mission was a success? One of the subordinates asked the leading figure. Yes it was, leader told us to kill the hunter squad and leave one alive, for what reason, though I don't know. Naruto growled, so they left Ao alive on purpose. We will just have to trust leader Sama. Another one of them added, they all silently agreed with the man. Upon arriving near the gates, the four got off the main road and went to what seemed to be just more bushes and grass. The leader held up a hand sign, and the image of the grass disappeared to be replaced with a small manhole, 
large enough for only one person to fit at one time. Naruto watched them all enter the base, taking note of the location for future use. Once the last one had gone underground, Naruto quickly dropped from his hiding spot and moved to the manhole, he uncovered it and slapped his bare hand on the ground next to the exit. A small seal appeared and it gave a quick exit to Naruto, should he need one. Entering the base, Naruto had officially infiltrated the hornet's nest. Konoha, Underground Caverns, Root Base Naruto stalked the halls, keeping out of sight and trying his best to stick to the shadows. Fortunately, the only thing lighting the place were some strategically placed torches and candles. Allowing Naruto to easily slide along the sides of the walls under the cover of darkness once he shut off the lights. Coming across the first door he found, he read the sign over it and smiled. Living Quarters, Block A. Naruto psyched himself, before opening the door, he snuck in and saw evenly spaced bunk beds with all the operatives either sleeping or missing entirely. Creating a few dozen shadow clones, Naruto got to work annihilating the root forces, one member at a time. He moved from room to room, he was the shadow on the wall that no one thought to look to, the one man out of place. By the time any root members could realize what was going on, they were dead on their feet. The lucky ones were killed while they slept, simple slits to the throat were all they received. Upon arriving at two double doors labeled Mess Hall Naruto stood with his clones and kicked the door down, arriving to a sparsely inhabited gymnasium-sized room. The only people there other than him were none other than Hayo and his squad, they all looked towards him with what was surely surprise under their masks. Kiri? What the hell are they one of them began to question Naruto's arrival before a kunai was launched and a flash appeared, his squad members were horrified as they saw his head hit the floor. Naruto stood with his broadsword out, facing the root soldiers with a rage that few had ever seen him have. He was going to kill every single one of them, no matter what it took. You die now root scum. Naruto and his clones charged, quickly overwhelming Hayo and his squad. The Konoha shinobi fought bravely, but were eventually cut down by the sheer amount of enemies attacking them. Hayo was the last one remaining. He was bloody and beaten, his tanto broken in two and his mask broken in half, and he watched Naruto make his way towards him, ready to execute the root operative. Danzo-sama, help. Naruto continued to make his way towards the panicking man, before he saw the door open directly in front of him, Hayo's back was to it. The Anbu turned around and saw his leader, Danzo standing in the doorway glaring at Naruto. Yes. Danzo-sama will defeat him. Good job Hayo, you have fulfilled your duty. Hayo's eyes widened when he heard those words and turned around, only to see a sword come around towards his neck. Naruto decapitated the man, leaving nothing but shock on the betrayed man's face. Hayo's last thoughts were on his leader, the man he had put all his life and loyalty into. Danzo-sama. You betrayed us all. Hello, Nine Tails. Naruto growled, taking a step closer to the older man. Danzo held his ground, clearly unfazed by the threatening demeanor that Naruto was showing. Danzo, you will pay for what you have done. Danzo smiled, he actually almost felt like laughing. I have done nothing wrong, everything that has been done has been for the betterment of Konoha. If you would have remained in your place like you should have, you would have played a part in that as well. Naruto scoffed, no way would he serve him. I would never have followed your orders Danzo. Danzo just shook his head, disappointed at the boy. You say that, but what if I could make it so you didn't have a choice? Naruto's eyes widened, what did he mean? No time to find out, I have to get him, before he tries something. Naruto charged towards Danzo, closing the distance between them in seconds. Suddenly, the blonde stopped running, his entire body was shaking, and his pupils became dilated. What, what is this? Again Jutsu, I can't move my body. Now then, bow nine tails. Naruto's body slowly moved to a kneeling position, a Sharingan eye briefly flashed in each of Naruto's pupils before disappearing. He had fallen under Danzo's mind control, Shisui's Sharingan ability. I am at your service, Danzo-sama. Danzo smirked, the boy had fallen right into his trap. He had lured Naruto here, knowing that he would be driven by revenge, to come and stop him, the boy's judgment became clouded, and Danzo acted on it. Slowly pulling out one of his kunai, Danzo stalked towards Naruto slowly. He wanted to savor this moment for the rest of his life. That's a good boy, now hold still you little runt. If Konoha cannot control the Nine Tails completely, then I will make sure no one can have its power. End of Chapter 11 Chapter 12 Genjutsu Broken, Jinchuriki Have Perks 
Kanoha, Underground Caverns, Root Base. Danzo stalked towards Naruto's kneeling form, his victorious smirk could grow no whiter than it was now. Naruto was helpless to just watch the older man approach with the small dagger, intending to end his life. Crap, this is bad. I can still think, but I can't influence my body's reactions. I have to think of a way out and quick. Remember our training in Kumo Naruto. Just like Killer B and Yogito taught you, a Jinchuriki is impervious to Genjutsu of any kind, as long as the tailed beast and container are in sync. Naruto wanted to slap his forehead in stupidity, how could he forget that lesson? All right, Kaiubi, disrupt my chakra. I have to move now. Kaiubi grunted an acknowledgement and quickly undid the bonds that held Naruto's conscience down, the boy had his body back. The blonde pretended to still be under his control until the last second, Danzo now stood directly in front of him poised to strike. Goodbye Nine Tails, Danzo plunged his dagger towards Naruto's unmoving neck, but his eye widened when the boy grabbed his wrist and with his immense strength twisted, breaking that wrist easily. Jumping away from Naruto and nursing his broken hand, the older man's elation had changed to seething anger. He glared at Naruto who was glaring right back at him, his broadsword was now in his hands again. Damn old bones, can't even handle a damn brat's strength, it has to be on par with Tsunada's. I may have to retreat. He was unable to continue when he noticed Naruto throw something at him, sifting through his knowledge, his eyes widened again at the outcome. The Yandame's kunai? A flash appeared in front of Danzo, and he was sliced in half, a clean horizontal cut right across his abdomen. Naruto watched as the body fell to the ground and Danzo uttered his last breathe, the last words from the monster of Kanoha. Not bad, for a demon. Naruto saw his eye close and turned around to leave, finished with this place. Naruto's eyes widened when he felt a presence behind him and looked to see, Danzo. He was standing there in front of the Kiri ninja, looking very annoyed at the outcome of that event. Well, I had hoped to avoid confrontation, but it appears I have no choice. Naruto growled. Damn right you don't have a choice, I'm going to make you pay. Danzo frowned, glaring at Naruto. You continue to say that, yet I don't see any results. I am curious however, as to how you were able to escape my genjutsu, it is a very powerful illusion of the Achiha. All you need to know is that a Jinchuriki is never affected by a genjutsu, no matter how powerful it is. Now enough talk, it's time to finish this. Danzo smiled, slowly undoing his bandages around his eye first, before moving onto his arm. I have been saving these for just the occasion, I am ready to finally use the powers that I have garnered for myself. It is time I force you to fight for this village, whether you wish to or not. Naruto watched as the man undid his bindings and revealed a Sharingan eye and an arm covered by a gauntlet. Huh, and here I always thought you were a cripple. How long have you been holding this secret? Danzo scoffed. Long enough, I have been saving these abilities for when I thought I would need them against you, please do not disappoint me runt. We'll see who you are calling a runt when this is over. Danzo chuckled, flexing his arms and slowly revealing the covered arm. When this is over, you will be calling me Danzo-sama. Naruto snarled and charged the man. Danzo began going through hand signs with both of his arms. Naruto's eyes widened in wonder when he saw Danzo's other arm, it was covered in Sharingans. What the hell did he do to himself? I count ten Sharingan total, nine eyes are open, and one is closed. Possibly he already used it for a technique we didn't catch, it might have been what had saved him from that blade attack. Possibly. Wind release? Vacuum sphere. Naruto saw him open his mouth and shoot a number of small blasts straight at him, leaving him little room to dodge. Thinking quickly, Naruto stopped running and held up his large sword in front of himself. It almost completely covered the entire front of his body. Hiding won't do you any good. Naruto felt the bullets impact the sword, but smiled as he watched the bullets disappear and a surge of chakra flow through his system. His sword's containment seals had done it again, who needs a fancy sword like the others when Naruto knows sealing, right? Interesting seal. Danzo analyzed the defensive move, silently impressed with Naruto's sealing ability. You haven't seen anything yet. Naruto went through a set of hand signs before slamming his palm onto the ground and pulling upwards. As if he was holding a magnet to metal, a rock column closely followed the moving hand out of the ground, and it stayed in front of Naruto. Earth release, rock blizzard. With a violent kick, Naruto sent dozens of large pieces of sharpened rocks at Danzo who deftly dodged them with his speed. Moving quickly, the Kiri swordsman launched himself at Danzo and thrust his sword at him again and again, each time it was dodged by Danzo. 
Come on boy, is that really all you have? Naruto growled and shot a lava bullet at Danzo who moved to avoid it, only to be met with a pain feeling in his shoulder. Looking towards his left arm, Danzo realized his folly too late to stop Naruto's sword from piercing through his body again leaving him without an arm. Naruto smirked in victory, but stopped smiling when he saw the Danzo in front of him disappear, he turned around to see Danzo going through more hand signs. Wind release? Vacuum wave. Naruto moved to put up his sword, but was stopped when Danzo pulled back his arm, and then the blonde saw it, a wire had wrapped itself around his sword. Giving a strong tug, Danzo took the sword right out of the swordsman's hand, it fell to the ground with a heavy thud. Having nothing to protect him against the wind, Naruto moved to one of the supporting pillars in the middle of the dining hall and hid behind one. The wind blades slashed right through them, making the roof dangerously shake from the weakening strength of the structure. Naruto luckily was able to duck from the blades, already having predicted the cover wouldn't last. Spying his sword on the ground, Naruto took out two of his father's kunai and charged for it. Danzo was running towards him, trying to intercept. Meeting Naruto before he could grab the sword, Danzo went to reach for it, but was burned when he attempted to grab it, the attack momentarily stunned him. A moment was all Naruto needed. In a second, Naruto had effortlessly kicked his sword into the air and threw his two kunai into either of Danzo's shoulders, causing the man to cry out in agony. His sword quickly fell due to gravity and Naruto grabbed it immediately, before slicing off Danzo's left arm. A full minute had gone by in the fight so far. Damn Izanagi will no longer work. Naruto waited for another apparition to take Danzo's place, but when he saw nothing appearing he smiled. Danzo was not happy, he was lightly panting and angered over the result of losing an arm to Naruto. Well, that worked out. This isn't over yet nine tails. Danzo's remaining arm began to sprout a growth, it slowly took the form of a tree. From that tree, hundreds of sharpened spikes launched at Naruto who was forced to use a technique to get away from them all. Lava release? Lava wall. Naruto stomped his foot onto the ground and a large wall of molten rock appeared in front of him, blocking the enemy attack's path. The spikes plunged straight into the lava and were set on fire, the tree slowly melted away. Lava A? Eh? I always knew I should have kidnapped him the day he was born from that wretched woman. Unfortunately for both combatants, the lava wall also affected the structural support and destroyed a few more pillars keeping the room up. There were only a few structural pillars remaining, and they were between the two combatants, one of them happened to be growing a chakra tail, while the other glared. It's time to finish this. Naruto's voice deepened, and his features became more announced on his face, allowing Danzo to envision the true demon inside of him. I will destroy you, if I must nine tails. I'd like to see you try. Naruto held out a hand and brought his sword to him, it flew through the air and was grabbed by the palm of his hand. Chakra flow, you can do many things with it. Naruto explained and Danzo scowled. I don't need a damn lesson on it, I'm more experienced than you will ever be. Naruto just shrugged and charged towards the man who in turn charged him, both hurtled straight for the other. Danzo took out one of his kunai and blew a gust of wind on it, a low whiner gust could be heard emanating from it. The two brought their weapons together in the middle of the room, a loud clack could be heard as the two tried to snuff out the other in their sword battle. Naruto smirked as he began to push Danzo back, the wind chakra being absorbed by the sword made the root commander's attack useless. Danzo scowled again, he backed away and went through hand signs while Naruto held up his hand and began to form chakra. Wind release, vacuum serial wave. Massive Rasengan. Naruto threw himself towards Danzo with the immense Rasengan in front of him, the wind blades disrupting, but not stopping the large, blue sphere. Danzo bit his tongue in annoyance and dodged the attack just barely, a part of his robe was ripped away from the blast. Unfortunately, the attack was the final blow for the underground base, and the roof began to fall on top of them, leaving them little time to think of a plan. Naruto began to go through hand signs, and a shadow clone popped into existence before the clone began to go through hand signs as well. The combo was a first for Naruto, he had just thought up the idea from his past fighting. Lava release, lava wall. Water release. Great waterfall technique. As the circular dome came into being around the two, the water immediately cooled the volatile lava into a solidified ash that was nigh unbreakable. Danzo angrily and if he would admit to it, jealously watched the Yuzumaki Kekei Genkai in action, and angered he could not do the same to save himself. 
Dodging the collapsing roof pieces, Danzo used his wind techniques to destroy the larger pieces and slowly began to jump towards the moonlight that shone through the cracks in the surface. Kanoha, Hakage Office. Sonata sat in her office, working late to finish up the stupid paperwork she was forced to do as Hakage. I wish Naruto hadn't have left, I could have given him this job. Sonata stopped writing for a moment and went into thought, she looked up at the ceiling. Naruto had yet to come for his monthly visit, and Sonata was getting increasingly antsy for him to come back home, if only for a little while. Sakura and the others were also very excited after receiving the news that he would be coming to visit soon, everyone had their hopes up. Her thoughts were interrupted when Shizuna came bursting in through the door with a number of jonin, including Kakashi. Hakage-sama, a large area of ground right outside of Konoha has just collapsed onto itself. There have also been scattered reports of two shinobi fighting each other there. Sonata's eyes widened, fighting? She turned serious immediately, her Hakage leadership ability coming into play. Let's go then, we have to stop it before it reaches Konoha. Yes ma'am. Konoha, Forest. Danzo. Nine Tails. The two combatants had escaped from the underground confines and now stood on the cracked and broken surface of the earth nearby, charging at one another. Naruto now had two tails, and Danzo's arm was furiously growing more and more spikes and tree growth, the Sharingan eyes flaring and spinning. Sending out multiple chakra arms, Naruto pinned Danzo in place, while he formed a Rasengan in his palm, the color was a deep vermilion. Nine tails Rasengan. Danzo smirked even as he was being crushed to death. You won't win that easily boy, Naruto watched in satisfaction as Danzo was obliterated by a combination of his chakra hands squeezing the man and his Rasengan ripping into his chest cavity. Blood spattered everywhere, Naruto felt much of it land on his face to which he slowly licked it with his tongue, the bloodlust feeling so good. Ha! A petty cretin like you could never kill me with that horrible replication of the Yandame's jutsu. Naruto's eyes widened as he turned around into a fist. He was knocked back onto the ground and was stopped by a seal that spread across his body, freezing his muscles and stopping his counterattack. Danzo was upon him. Going through the appropriate hand signs, Danzo gathered air into his mouth and looked down at the shocked Naruto, he was desperately trying to free himself of the seal. It would never work. Wind release? Vacuum great sphere. At point blank range, it is impossible for even the Kaiubi to heal this. Danzo, stop. Before he had time to react, a punch had been sent right into his cheek from the side, effectively stopping his jutsu from continuing. Looking to the source of the intrusion, he found none other than the Hakage of Konoha. Sonata was panting slightly and was flushed with anger. What the hell are you Danzo was interrupted when a primal roar came from something to his right, it also drew Sonata's attention there as well. Naruto was releasing a large amount of chakra and slowly getting up from his prone position, the seals slowly receding from his body. The Konoha ninja's eyes widened. My god, how is this boy able to release so much of the Kyubi's power? He should be going insane with bloodlust. Naruto, is that really you? Roar breaking the seal, Naruto turned his demonic eyes towards a slightly unnerved Danzo and flashed from their view, only to appear right in front of the hobbled man. Die. Naruto clawed the man repeatedly, blood shot out of his chest from the deep gashes Naruto was creating. Sonata was horrified, what had led Naruto to do something so sinister? Naruto, stop. Sonata started to run towards him with tears in her eyes, the other jonin had arrived and were visibly repulsed by the Kaiubi container's presence. Kakashi overlooked the battlefield and shook his head grimly as he watched Sonata run towards Naruto. That's dangerous, what the hell are you doing? Stopping from his onslaught on Danzo for a moment, Naruto got up from the man and turned around to see Sonata running towards him her fear evident from her face. Naruto frowned, even though his anger had been greatly enhanced by Kaiubi's chakra flowing through him, he could still control himself, while in this form. In fact, thanks to my own training and Killer B's advice, I can now transform into the eighth tail state before I lose control by going any farther. Naruto quickly reverted his transformation back to his normal self and was tackled by Tsunade just as the last of the red-orange chakra dissipated. Naruto. What what are you doing here? Please please don't transform again. Naruto was shocked as Tsunade childishly punched his chest with her fists, sobbing for him to never transform again. Smiling softly, he placed his arms around his Bachan and hugged her tightly to his chest. It's alright Bachan, I'm. 
Naruto was cut off when a wet crunching sound was heard, Sonata looked up into Naruto's widened eyes. Naruto, Sonata tried to get a response from the now unmoving boy, but her eyes widened in fear when she saw blood seep out of his open mouth, his face of surprise. Die, nine tails, and with that, Danzo fell backwards onto the hard ground, his kunai still lodged in the back of Naruto's chest cavity. His breathing labored, he knew that he would not have much more time. Naruto, Naruto, no, no. Sonata began to sob as Naruto's weight fell onto her, his eyes gently closing as he embraced the overwhelming urge to sleep. Shizune. Shizune immediately appeared, and they both went to work, while Naruto was lying on the ground, blood pouring out of his back. We need to stabilize him, his lung and kidney have been punctured. Shizuna warned, Sonata's illuminated hands moved up and down Naruto's body, trying to sift through where to heal first. The treatment isn't working, that bastard. Sonata looked up from Naruto to where Danzo was but her eyes widened when there was no body. Kakashi. Find Danzo, don't let him escape. Kakashi's eyes were actually tearing up, he couldn't believe that Danzo would go so low as to hit Naruto, while his back was turned. I can't lose Naruto, he, he is my last hope of redemption. Yes ma'am. The silver-haired man disappeared, he was on a manhunt for the murderer of one of the most important people in the ninja world. Come on Naruto, wake up. Wake up. Wake up for Bachan. Sonata was crying desperately, actually praying that Kaiubi would help her godson come back, come back to life. We're losing him Sonata-sama. The two medics working to save Naruto's life did not notice the appearance of the majority of the rookie 12, all coming to see the big commotion. Sakura pushed her way through the circle of Jonan to see what the commotion was, the panic in her teacher's voice terrified her. Finally getting through to where Tsunade and Shizuna were, Sakura's eyes widened, and tears were already forming, Naruto lay motionless in a pool of blood, his blood. Oh my god. Naruto. Tsunade looked up to see her pink-haired apprentice looking at the blonde with sheer terror in her eyes, the medic glared at her. Get a grip Sakura, and help us, because if you don't, he may really die. Awaking from her stupor, Sakura knelt down next to her teacher and began to heal Naruto's large wound, but found it not working. We already tried Sakura, Danzo laced his kunai with poison. It is preventing our medical jutsu from repairing his cells, we can't even stop the bleeding. Sakura's eyes widened again, how were they supposed to save him? Brain began to fall as everyone began to realize the vibe, the vibe that Naruto really was dying. It soaked all the shinobi there, but no one gave it a second thought, all too entranced by the boy the three most powerful medics Kanoha had ever seen, were desperately trying to save. Even those shinobi with grudges against Kayuubi were at a loss, when it came to feeling any anger towards Naruto, this showed that he was no different, that he could be struck down just as easily as any of them could be. Damn it. Don't you go Naruto. Don't leave. Sakura began to pound her fist into Naruto's chest as his heart stopped beating, her desperation evident in her rescue attempt. The hero was dying and no one could stop it. Kanoha Hospital, one week later. Naruto awoke to a lot of, white. Feeling deja vu all over again from his last hospital visit, Naruto calmed himself and tried looking left this time again. He saw nothing but more of his room and a white door that led out to the hallway. Looking in front, he saw many get well cards and balloons on a table waiting for him to look at, he absently wondered how long he had been here. Lastly, he turned to his right, only to be assaulted by a fist to his face, it sent him flying back into his hospital pillow, and he thought that he could see stars. About time you looked in this direction. Naruto recognized that voice, but it couldn't be her. She was still in Kiri, right? Them may hi me? He croaked out, sounding out her name in genuine disbelief it was her. Inclining his head slowly to look in the right direction, he was met with the narrowed eyes of one Yuzumaki Mei, and she really was angry. Her lips were pursed shut, her eyes were glaring murder, she was standing with her hands on her hips, and there was little of the usual shine that she would radiate when he was near. Naruto gulped, he knew that he had done something bad, and now he was going to pay for it. I'm not the type of woman to cry when her fiancé is injured, nor the type to sob when she was disobeyed by her most loyal ninja, just for the sake of revenge. But Mei lost her anger and looked down, her bangs not allowing him to see her face. You, made me into that type of woman with this stunt. Naruto's eyes widened when Mei tackled him in bed, her arms wrapped around his neck and her lips over his. The kiss was a hungry one, but it was also to reassure Mei that he was still there, alive and unharmed. I'm, I'm such an idiot. I'm so, so sorry Mei. 
I should have just listened to you but I, I may moved away a bit from his face and had a small, rueful smile on her face. You were in Yuzumaki, I should have expected something like that from you. Just, don't do it again. Her eyes darkened and her voice had taken an ominous tone, one that made Naruto truly afraid. Do you understand, Kibito? Yes, Mayheim. She brightened up again and smiled, kissing his cheek and sitting down in a nearby chair. He grabbed her hand and stroked it, glad that she had forgiven him. So, how long have I been out? May looked at him, she was frowning from actual amount of time. One week, I arrived after the first day. I had set out soon after you had left with no bodyguards, they only would have slowed me down. Naruto was able to afford a smile at that, one that made May smile too. Wow, what a woman. May blushed, looking away from him to try and hide it. It's what any good fiancé would do, right? Naruto chuckled, squeezing her hand to reassure her everything was fine. I know that I would do it in a heartbeat for you. May smirked. And you mean that literally too, don't you? They both laughed at that and settled for just talking with one another the rest of his recovery, it was nice to be with reunited once again. Kanoha, Deep Forest. Danzo was huffing from pain and exertion, his men were carrying him to their destination. Danzo smiled at the thought that his soldiers still remained, save Hayo's squad. He had cast a complex illusion over the base before Naruto had arrived, making him see that he was killing his men when really he was passing through empty rooms. Jinchuriki may not be affected by direct attacks by Genjutsu, however they can still be affected by their surroundings being under an illusion. Sir? How much longer until we reach our destination? The large group of Root Shinobi had been running almost non-stop from Konoha since Danzo's close victory over Naruto, he had immediately gotten away with his men and ordered them to set off for Amagakura. Not much longer boys, I have been there, once. We have, much to discuss with them. Odagakura, Underground Base. Sasuke, how is your individual training going? Well I hope. A pale man with snake eyes questioned his apprentice, a blue-haired teen with a sword hooked to his belt and the Achiha symbol on his clothing. Sasuke turned to look at Orochimaru, his tone of voice or looks not changing from their level of neutral. It's going fine. It won't be much longer until you get yours, Orochimaru. Oh? That's good, I can't wait to test the fruits of our labor. The man hissed out, pleased with his vessel's response and progress over the past three years. HMPH. Whatever. Arachimaru watched the haughty clansman walk towards his room, totally ignoring Arachimaru's wish to continue the admittedly one-sided conversation. Little brat, it may be sooner than you think. Perhaps your friends could try and rescue you again? I would love to see how that Yuzumaki has progressed since our last meeting. The snake man licked his lips, already imagining the delectable battle it would be. End of chapter 12